I'm going to talk to you today about the product you're creating and the research process, at least the early stages of that. So you are examining early trade in medieval and m early modern eras. These are the civilizations you're looking at. And I'm going to reintroduce you to the research model we have here at New Canaan High School. It starts with wonder. And the ultimate goal of this wondering process is to develop a research question. Your product is an annotated bibliography, and that may be unfamiliar language for you. Bibliography, we're using mm, somewhat interchangeably with the word works cited. So if you've created a works cited before, it's kind of like a works cited plus annotations. So this is kind of what an annotated bibliography looks like. Um, you can see that there are three sources. Those are in yellow. They are highlighted. They are the citations, and what follows each of those citations is the annotation. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what the annotation involves. Citations, presumably, you have worked on before, and we're going to give you some coaching on that too. But the new piece to this learning is the annotation. So you might be wondering, what is an annotation? It's a very specific recipe. So it's in your rubric, which is also in your assignment. And you can see that the first part of the annotation um, includes a description of the source. So in this case, it says this is reference article from a classic encyclopedia. And then it's going to elaborate a little bit. So you're going to choose one of maybe three or four possibilities to sort of focus on. In this case, I thought it was important and relevant. The citation that was provided by the source, which was Britannica, did not include the author's name, but the article itself was signed by a person named Ralph Hammond Innes. And I googled him and found out that he was a British novelist and a travel writer. So I wanted to address that. Um, then comes the next part, which is really the summary of the source in one or two sentences. Really, it can be hard to do that. So, so be succinct. Really try to keep it very short. What is this article telling us? Basically, this article attributed the fall of the Aztec Empire to Corsas' sharp leadership skills because he was able to read the political situation in Central America and work it to his advantage to conquer the and convert the Aztecs. That's what the source said. Okay, so the second part of the annotation is where you carefully and personally evaluate how the source answers your research question and informs new learning and prompts deeper questions. So that's where you, in the blue at the bottom, we write, I wrote, since I was focused on the role the Spanish played in the decline of the Aztec Empire, I chose this article on Hernan Cortez. I only used the part about Montezuma, so only about 450 words of the 1700 word article. It helped me understand that Cortez may have contributed to the fall of the Aztec Empire, but I would like to have confirmation of that in another source. Right? So questions, what you need to do next with your research, what you got out of it, all of that. Just be super honest. That's really important. And then the next two things that we're evaluating with your annotated bibliography. One is the citation format. So you've done citations before. It has to be right, and it's a holistic grade on all three citations. So if two are great and one not so great, that's going to factor your grade, even though you have two really good ones. Um, the other thing is the document format. So this is your formatted document. This is what it should look like. You have an example of that in your actual annotated bibliography assignment. Now we're going to talk about your first source, which is a reference resource. When you start on the research process, you start with wonder. And wondering has some very specific steps that are associated with it. One is you need to find out the when, where, what, why, and who, right? So that's part of it. We call that the five W's. And for that, we use reference resources. These are encyclopedias, articles that give you broad overviews, introductions to books, that kind of thing. So what you should do while you are wondering is to learn the who, what, why, where, when, um, not necessarily in that order, collect keywords, and take notes. And you're going to be doing that during this period today. This is what the who, what, why, where, when can look like. 
All right. So my when is the years that it happened. Where is, we could say current day Mexico, but specifically Mexico City, which was called at the time Tecnotitlan at the time of Cortez's arrival. Um, who's involved? We have the Spanish explorer Hernán Cortez, and we also have Montezuma too. What happened? The Aztec Empire collapsed. Why? Well, that's a little bit tricky because that's one of the things I'm trying to learn more about. But according to this source, the Aztec Empire collapsed because Cortez is, quote, the Spanish conquistador, conquistador who overthrew the Aztec Empire from 1519 to 1521 and won Mexico for the crown of Spain, unquote. Then you can go through your document and start looking for words that may help you locate other articles that will get you to the more specific things that you're looking for. So as you move through the research process, your resources should go from broad to narrower to narrower to narrower. And so what we're highlighting here are a lot of them are capitalized words, some are dates, some are locations, some are people. Um, sank ships is like a really big deal when it comes to Cortez because he literally sank his ships so he couldn't leave. He was pretty committed to staying. Um, names of people, he was gifted a woman. Um, uh, there was a battle of Otumba. So then you're going to highlight some words in your document that you're then going to go ahead and you're going to put in your notes. Now, these are single words. You may want to find a few phrases to go along with it. Martin was his son. Um, Marina ultimately um, ended up being his companion. Uh, Velasquez was another explorer. Um, he... Uh, had his own people name him general or chief of ju and chief of justice. There was a battle in Otumba. Um, so November 8, 18, 1519 was uh, an important date in terms of the conquest and so forth and so on. So you're going to write down these things and you can be, you can do it in a bullet list. You can do it in little, um, little snippets of sentences. That's fine. Any of those is fine. Now we're going to talk about sources. So we can do this poll. It's pretty fun. Um, if you scan the QR code or enter the URL bit.ly slash wh1poll, as in World History One poll, um, you will see that you are invited to enter your information. And so the question is, how long does it take you to locate a source for a history class when you do a Google search. With the last class we did this poll with, it was two minutes or less. If your teacher clicks on results, they will see the results. Okay, for our next activity, we are going to Schoology, to your course, and we're going to look at the activity for evaluating resources. And you see you have a document, and on the top, the top row identifies the source. It gives it a source number. You have the author or information about the author. You have the date it was published, the word count, and whether or not it includes primary sources. This list, this document, is the first 22 Google results for the search Fall of the Aztec Empire. Now you are going to, looking at that document, identify which sources would best meet your needs for reference. So remember, you're looking for the five W's and you're looking for keywords, right? So which source would you choose for that purpose out of this list of 22? And we want you to rank them. So your very best source, your second source, your third best source, your fourth best source, and your fifth best source. So write your name, your teacher, the period, Write down the source number that you're choosing and explain in the rationale, doesn't have to be really long or elaborate, why you chose that source. So most of you, the larger number of you, was able to locate a source in under two minutes. So we're going to give you, we're going to be very generous, we're going to give you a full five minutes to locate a source from this list of 22 results. All right, for our next activity, what we want you to do is take the form that you filled out and you're going to enter it in this Google form. So it's right here in your resources in the library, is library lessons for medieval and modern trade. And you go to the Google form, complete and submit. 
And this is your form. So it's basically you're going to choose from the select so from the drop down menu which was your very best selection, which was your second best selection, which was your third best selection, which was your fourth best selection, which was your fifth best selection. And then what did you learn from this activity? Okay, so when I went through the responses on the little pieces of paper from one of the classes, this was a word cloud of their results. And you'll notice that the, uh, the presence of primary sources was considered a really good thing in the resources. Trustworthiness was also very high on the list. Word count was high. Some said high, low count, high word count, and others said low word count. So word count was kind of funny. It went either way. Some students were like, yeah, we don't want to read a lot of words. Um, recent, re whether it was recent or not was really important. Some of the things I want to draw your attention to in this list that are concerning to me is who, whether or not a source is well-known, reliable, trustworthy, a .edu or a .org, that doesn't matter. I really want to underscore that. It does not matter. When we look at that list, number 18 is a National Geographic. Number 21 is a National Geographic. The number 18 National Geographic is actually a lesson plan for fifth graders, whereas the number 21 National Geographic, which is a trustworthy and fabulous source, is a fantastic article that I would highly recommend, not necessarily for wonder, but maybe later in the research process, but it's also subscription only. You have to sign in. So if that happens, we have a mechanism for accessing that article. So all you need to do is email us, the librarian, or there's also a form in ClassLink for that in the library folder. Um, .edu doesn't matter, .org doesn't matter. You can have really bogus sources on any of those sites. The fact that it includes video may really be important to you. You might w work really well with video or audio, and that is a valuable aspect of it. So th if that's your thing, then definitely include those sources if it works. One thing we'd like to point out is number of students chose Britannica. We do not want you using Britannica.com online. There's a reason for that. We have access to premium subscription of Britannica right there in Schoology. If you look in the left sidebar, it's over there. And so there's some, dis there's some distinctions between these two. But first, I'll say this isn't the most important, but it's the one that's, many, that's very important to you, um, that Britannica.com provides incorrect citations, whereas Britannica School, the one that we have in Schoology, provi provides correct citations. So that's one piece. Um, Britannica School has more content. It's well organized into tables of contents. Um, it And Britannica.com has a quarter of the information. Literally, I only sampled a few articles, but it's literally a quarter of the information. The Britannica at school provides supplemental resources, so videos and website links, which can be really helpful, and Britannica.com has lots of ads. Now you're going to try. What we want you to do is locate one reference resource for your civilization, and then what we want you to do is go straight into your research guide and start taking notes. You can add the when, the where, the who, the what, the why, and by the way, I recommend that order. Um, why is the hardest? And if you're really stumped for a why, it's why did it become successful and why did it collapse? Those are two very good why questions you could start with and maybe that will prompt you. Um, try to find 10 or so keywords that might help you learn more detailed information about your civilization. And if you don't, if, they, if they're meaningless to you all by themselves, write next to them what they mean, right? You don't want to put down somebody's name and then not know who they are. So if they're a governor, if they're a sister, if they're a, a child, if they're um, uh, a, a, an ally, if they're an enemy, write that down, right? Um, so go ahead and start populating your research guide. You'll note that there is space for an MLA-9 citation. If you've if you've chosen Britannica as your source or a source that's right there in the left sidebar of Schoology, all of those sources will provide a citation. All you need to go is the cite, the cite button and copy the citation and paste it in. If you're using a website, just put the link in that space until we can come back to you and give you a little more guidance. Before you leave today, we want to give you uh, an opportunity to think about research questions because that's really the culminating experience of wondering 
So this is sort of a typical question that we would see from a ninth grader as they start the research process. There are a couple things that are beautiful about a research question is they're not published anywhere and they can evolve as you learn more. So you may start with this research question. It's a fine starter research question, but I want you to think a little bit more about what your assignment is and what your unit is focusing on. So the one of the things you're thinking about is trade. So how do we incorporate trade into that research question? To what extent was the collapse of the Aztec Empire caused by trade? So that's where you like you can go and do a little research and figure out, I don't know, what's, like what was the role of trade in the collapse of the Aztec Empire? So you're kind of bouncing around between wonder and sort of skipping ahead a little bit to investigate because you need to find more information before you really can flesh that question out. So we know that there was there were Spaniards in the Central America who were interacting with the Aztec around 1520. So we kind of want to know what role the Spaniards might have played in it. So we can say to what extent was the collapse of the Aztec Empire caused by trade with the Spanish, right? But then we also know that the Spanish were also interacting with other indigenous communities and some of those were at war or in conflict with the Aztec. So maybe it's actually a little bit more complicated than we think. So let's go back and research a little bit more. So again, we're bouncing between wonder and investigate on the research model. And now we see that the trade deficit that was created by the alliance of the Spanish and other indigenous communities actually created a lot of tension for the Aztec and may have contributed to the collapse of the Aztec Empire. We don't know for sure. What we're investigating is to what extent was the collapse of the Aztec Empire caused by Spanish trade with other indigenous Americans. We do want you to take a look at your annotated bibliography, which is in your world history course on the library lessons for medieval and early modern trade folder. And there are a couple of things that we want you to do. First, open, click link, then click link again. I know it's clumsy. And then you click on the assignment itself. So in this case, it's freshman tester because that's the name of the imaginary student we're using, but it will have your name there. So just click on that. And when you open it, you should see a document that has a header and also it has on the second page a long checklist and on the third page and fourth page it has a sample annotated bibliography. When you begin to populate this document you're going to put your cursor right below where it says works cited and you're going to use where it says author, title, container, contributor, version, number, publisher, date, and location. You're going to use that as a guide for how to enter your information. Now, I don't want you to spend more than five minutes trying to construct a citation. I really don't. Five minutes is your timer. You can put on a timer and set yourself a timer. What we want you to do is try to get as many of the parts in there as possible. If you don't see it, move on. I'm going to tell you right now that contributor, version, and number, you probably won't have at all. And publisher may be the same as the container, in which case you leave it out because we don't repeat information. If you have, if you're unsure about any one of those things, click on it in the header and then open the link, which will take you to a slide that will show you how to enter the information. So if you're not sure you have two authors or you have three authors, you're not sure how to put that in, click on where it says author and it will tell you. Same with title, same with container, and same with date, which is formatted uniquely in, in if for MLA 9. It will explain all the parts. So this document is really rich in information that will help you develop a correct citation. And you will worry about the annotations in a little bit of time, but we, we want you to make sure that you have enough notes that you can be able to reflect on this source. Okay?